if I were not so wise a man, great beard and everything, if I were not so wise a man, then I might be in love with you. And all the pages of my book would be just daisy petals on the wind. Um, oh, is that hard to... That being in love, that, that, that plighting your troth is how we still talk about it. You know, our troth being put into a plight, being put into peril by offering it to somebody else. Now that I'm that bit older, I mean, there's still a hankering for that feeling, but it also feels like there needs to be some setting of other kinds of boundaries. If you are going to surrender all boundaries to this person, you need to have other boundaries set too. And these two, which deal with that rather harsh thing of unrequited love, I think they also talk a little bit about setting the boundaries between you and the other person. And I begin with this one called The Boat. She found him on the beach, collecting flotsam from the sea. This is the wreckage of our love. The ship I built for you and me, and there, atop a rising wave, we were to sail forever free. These drenched and drowning splinters washed ashore upon this stranger tide are remnants of our happy voyage. The name I blazoned on the side is split, and only rue remains, that you refuse to be my bride. The waves we crested are no more, have broken on a rocky strand, ranged beneath a foreign moon, and never will return to land, or rise again, you loving not nor giving me your hand. She took his arm quite gently, led him further from the main to where an inland river ran into a lake and out again. And there beside the quiet lap, she listened to his pain. And there, the softened timbers she refashioned to a prow, a shallow draught, a stern, and all locks too their crossing to allow. A painted T upon the board, wrote true upon the bow. We were not meant for tempest seas or torrents, nor the storm that rends the deeper craft, but like the sea, my loving never ends. Whene'er you may embark with me, and we will row the lake as friends. Of course, to the one who wants to be in love, that friend, that word is very much a death nail, is a stake, as if it's the end. But surely it's the case that even before you think of being in love, surely you must be friends first. That's my thought. And it comes up again in the second poem called The Wrestlers. She grappled me first with an arm lock and with two feet settled in my lap. I matched her moves with a hand on her hand, covered her with cushions. She upped the game, ducking under my guard, short arms flung around my wide waist. I wrestled back, gripped her square across the shoulders, held close, breathed her hair. Locked together then for a round or two, till, the ref said break. She threw me around then. No thought for a trophy. This was to be just a friendly match. And I'm on the ropes. 
end of round ringing thinking i thought i was a contender i upped my game started playing flirty soon things were getting dirty and my wrestling in mud band laughing and naked and learning new holds but some moves i learned were not allowed and i submitted because in these matches the other's rules need to be followed. I loved her first. I loved her right. And I'm loving her still as her friend. Though I might still want to fling her to the mat, bouncing on the canvas, it's her decision I defend. I'm stepping bruised from the ring grappling with the memory of her hold that grips now cold and my bright and hard spandex my i can have you bravado neither are of any use so i watch her from the ringside cheer her to the championship just not mine So I think there is something in if you want to continue loving someone isn't it something like giving them the love that they want that they need certainly something to think about those two were coming out of the loss of all boundaries and the force boundaries reimposed and Oh, the ache and the heartache of, oh, I wanted to love you. But the next two are kind of in reaction to that, kind of looking back to saying, what is this thing that I don't understand, this formless thing? How can I make sense of it? And both of them are perhaps attempts to formulate or define or reset boundaries to that sense of being with someone, surrendering to someone having them surrender to you, being in a relationship. Tricky, and this is 10 years old, this poem. I feel a lot of it is still true for me. I called it the dream of you versus the reality of me. And it's almost a kind of manifesto of the time, at least, of how I would like that person to be and how would I <laughs> like me to be within it. You will make me a gift of yourself because yourself is your own. Not sell it or barter. Knowing your seed may yet fall on harder ground. You will walk by me, flow around me, go your own way. Near me, meet with me, not push me before you, nor tug at my step allow for your movement and mine the dance that is ours allow for me to adjust to you and to recognize the cost see how i alter my course you will fight with me spar with me and know it is play fight with me spar with me for this will be war a war to be fought for you and for me Scold me with love, but forgive me. Say no to me, and yet trust me. You will see my gods, see them within me. You will bring me your own and make me known to them. Know I am more than I am, than you can know. And yet my least is enough, more than enough. Well, you will know that you know me and be sure that you're wrong. You will greet in each moment my revelation, my life, the bursting and unlooked for shocks. You will hear the words I'm unable to say and all my inadequate phrases. Bear my scars, my stains, not mend me, but know why I am broken and where. 
see me shackled see me free applaud the flight from the swinging trapeze knowing you can catch and you can be caught and yet be ready to fall you will believe that i love you enough to release you rather than let you be less than you are allow me to miss you allow me the absence of you for distance to be as much of a kiss as the deepest embrace give me the gift of having you out of sight out of mind and in unexpected moments find you again for the very first time know that togetherness comes to an end and greet that parting as a long lost friend And on a similar vein, although less intellectual or codified, perhaps, is this one called How Deep. I want to be heart deep with you. Not toe deep. Not kicking deep. Not knee deep not leery hand on the thigh deep hip deep but more deep heart deep which is also breath deep not over the head deep but heart deep where pulses meet Because it is a living thing, you cannot claim it, tame it, keep it in a box, even when it's quiet, when it's just a touch, it will not stay engaged behind your locks. It must be given air, it must be breathed, a lover's body entering your lungs. For it can live within a tiger's bite, within the whip and lash of fighting tongues, but nor can it be simply left to stray. A flyer on the high trapeze just left to fall, just left uncaught and dashed across the sand. A wild flailing dancer at the ball. Desire seeks its match and to be met with equal love and innocence, with joy in the discovery, with trust, entwined with mutual providence. Each touch is like a bloom, a reach of sunlight, warming deep within the ground, beneath the skin. The chill surrenders up a shuddered call to passion, gold around the blood and heart, the seed and hungry embers roaring for a flame. The touch is twice itself and them a one and only moment with no name. And when it passes, what is left is bone and truth, the flute that made the song. And what it was has passed to other worlds. Be not afraid. It won't be long, this moment of no occupancy. Breath is still to share, and warmth, and sleep, and vision clear the intimacy so impossible to keep. It is a living thing. It will stay with you. You need not keep it in, in chains. As well to swallow thunder down, to bar the mountain from the rains as well to preach a shame upon the young or chain or claim a desert drought amongst the old to fling away that which is always in your hand but so impossible to hold
strange thing this being in love and I do wonder is it something that you can ever do on your own <laughs> but it really does seem to be it needs to or more there's a certain chemistry that allows a certain opening of who we are I think I know this because I think I've tried to manufacture it in the past and then there's been brief glancing moments sometimes when you feel like <sighs> together we can maybe open up paradise and so my last one touching on that is called our heaven ours It was a door I found, and always it was locked, would not budge or answer to my solitary knock. Till one day, seeing you approach from afar, I caught the thinnest blink of light, the door ajar. And as your dancing steps brought you more near, I felt more than saw a hint of the beyond appear. A wish of green, a spark of purpled lawn and moss beyond the doorway, you're coming close. And warmth and sunlight streaming, flowers beaming, open as a rose with you by me. I have stood a long time by this door, knuckles red with knocking, waiting. Is the first thing you said. And I, amazed, with you at my side, stepped into this fabled garden. The door flung wide. So what do you reckon being in love? Hands up anybody who solved it. It feels like a, a necessary aberration sometimes. <laughs> An opportunity to, to grow, to break the shell, to let yourself put down roots into something. At the same time, it's so prone to imbalance and catastrophe. If you found it in your years, and I'm very glad for you, and hopefully you have it still, or find it tomorrow if you want it. 